So what I wanted to do is define Surat al-Mustaqim for you in somewhat of an interesting way so that you're able to visualize it. That on one end it, conta it, it contains things which are not flexible and on the other end it has this dynamism that especially for those of us in America and especially those of us born in America who know that The Wire wasn't a TV series, right? Those of who know what it's like to live in certain realities, whether it's the burbs or not. But we have to be empowered to know, and as I finish, that the fatwa is affected by the following things. I mentioned one is people. Number two is place. It can change according to the, if you will, called what is tipping point that is apparent in certain areas based on the understanding of the mufti as he takes the kulli and applies it with the juz'i. He takes the universal and makes it work with the text itself. And that's not easy. Number three are certain dispensations recognized by Islam, like fear. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah said, Inna min al jawab wa sukut. He said, some, some issues, their answer is to be quiet because you fear for your life. Qala rajulu mu'minu min ali fir'aun yaktumu imanahu. Allah mentions the Sutra for the man who hid his iman, fearing for his life. Ila an tattaqu minhum tuqa. It's mentioned in the Quran. Number four are phenomena, what are called nawazil, issues that suddenly befall the Muslim community that require the fatwa to change in order to make sure that the benefit for that person in this life and the next are maintained. And I'll give you an example of that. I had a woman who converted to Islam in California. She drove via Maulana five hours to me. And she said, Sheikh, I have become Muslim and my father is the head of a religious cult. He is the spiritual father of this religious cult. And I am the heiress of the cult. I said, subhanAllah, ajib. But I want to be Muslim because the cult is kufr. I was like, yo, this lady is something else, man. She didn't have on hijab. You know what I'm saying? She came in incognito. And she said, but there's a problem, Sheikh. If I announce my Islam, I may be physically harmed. Real talk. And I got to teach Sunday school. Because if I don't teach Sunday school, they're going to come after me and my daddy. She said, but alhamdulillah, I only teach Tawheed. Even in the Sunday school, I teach Tawheed. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I'm doing like a hashi on that joint. I said, subhanAllah. She said, I'm not going math, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, letters to Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians. No, 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 no. I'm sticking with Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. I might touch on Malachi, but that's pushing the envelope. And those of us who came out of Sunday school, you remember VBS, Vacation Bible School. We memorized all that. So she said, Sheikh, what do I do? I said, keep doing what you're doing. She said, but how? Like, I'm Muslim, and if I, be, if I, I want to do Islam, but if I do it, I'll die. I was like, exactly, you're going to die. And we need you alive. She's like, but how do I pray? How, how, how do I? I said, go in the restroom, shut the door, cover the, the toilet, put a sajada down, and pray in the restroom, as the Malikis allow this. That's not a fatwa for the whole community. But that's allowing her to maintain her Islam. Another sister called me last year. Listen to what some people are struggling with in this country so you can appreciate what you have as I finish. She became Muslim, right? Her mother found out, immediately stormed her to the church. Evangelical, hardcore, man. Sat in front of the preacher, he went off, da 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 kept going at it. She didn't say anything. And then the mother said, if you're gonna stay in my, this is a, this is a minor, single parent family, if you want to stay in our home and not be homeless, then you have to go to church every Sunday with me and don't be Muslim. She never responded about the don't be Muslim part. She just goes to church on Sunday. And it's interesting in Khalil, Ya Mawlana, Imam Khalil talks about the convert to Islam was forced to go to the church. And this was written 700 years ago. It's a very beautiful thing. And he said, we don't declare him as a murtad because it's karaha. He's being forced. You know what she told me? I have to fast for Ramadan, Imam, how can I do it? I said, Wallahi, that's a tough one right there. Because she said, if I wake up and cook food, or after sunset and cook food, my mother is going to know I'm what? And don't tell me the community is going to help her. Come on now. You know what she did the whole month of Ramadan? 
She broke her fast on protein shakes. You know, the powder in your room you can put in a, in a glass and put some water in there and you get like a meal replacement thing. And she did so horror with protein shakes. And she said, I have maintained my relationship with Allah. And even though I wasn't able to do certain things, my iman is the iman of Bilal, man. She didn't say, I'm Bilal, but she said, I feel what Bilal said he went through because I'm going through it. Now, if we would have not given her fatwa and just told her, you know what, forget it. You got to go buy some jilbabs, man. Kick down the door. Forget Sunday school, these crusaders, man. It's straight on like popcorn. And, you know, go cook in the morning and tell them to become Muslim or they're going to hell. And that's what happened to me when I became Muslim. And it took me eight years to fix the damage I did with my mother. Eight years to fix that damage. But here is where you can't, and, and these type of fatwa also shouldn't be published to the people. This is fatwa khas. But what I wanted to show you is how that might differ from Saudi Arabia, that might differ from Egypt, that might differ from Sudan, that might differ from Somalia, because we have to make sure that people are able to maintain their faith as long as they can and stay strong. And that's our role.